This is a short video to explain the philosophy behind strength training for rowing. Um, one of the first things we're going to look at is the equation for the drag on the boat uh, and its relationship to velocity of the boat. Um, whenever we row a boat, we have to overcome the drag force uh, with a, the opposing force in order to maintain boat speed. So it's important to understand this relationship and how it fits with force production uh, during the rowing stroke. So we're going to look at uh, the equation to determine how much force we actually need to double the boat speed. So if we look at this equation here, um, if we wanted to set the boat speed equal to 1, uh, we're just throwing in some arbitrary numbers here, uh, 1 squared is 1, so therefore the force that we would need to overcome in order to maintain that boat speed uh, would be 1. Okay, so that's just an application of that equation. So now we look at this, uh, these numbers, and if we want the boat speed to double, then the velocity, so we go from 1 to 2, the velocity has doubled, the force required or the drag on the boat has actually quadrupled. So in order to double the boat speed, the amount of force you've got to put on the oar is four times as much as if it were half the speed. So that's, that's, that's this equation at work explaining how much force we really have to put in in order to get more gain in velocity. So that relationship, uh, drag, this one right here, drag is proportional to velocity squared, is shown you know, roughly by this red line right here. So as you can see, in order to get the velocity uh, to increase, um, we're going to have to put a much bigger exponential force, and that's really why that, that curve looks like that. So we've got a couple of things going on here. Um, we might look at the different ways in which we train for rowing, and um, I'm putting forward that this straight line right here uh, might be a continuum for a conditioning program that is just 100% cardio. So you're out there cycling your bike or rowing uh, on the ergometer or swimming or anything else in that nature that's sort of a, that's sort of a consistent uh, cardio work. And I think the important thing to, to look at in terms of coaching is at some point along this line, uh, you have to weigh up whether or not, let's say you're doing 15 hours of training, uh, 15 hours of cardio, you have to weigh up whether or not, you know, around about the 10 or 11 or 12 hour a week point of cardio, whether or not three more actual hours of cardio are going to give you an increasing return for the time spent. And I'm saying there's a breaking point here. And what I'm saying is if you broke it down to, say, 11 hours of cardio and four hours of strength training, there is a point at which you get more gains from doing the strength training. And this strength training you know, could involve um, you know, lifting uh, or plyo plyometrics, such as box jumps and things like that, which actually have a strength component to it, but you're also developing the cardio. And so what I'm saying here is because of this relationship, um, strength is a big part of what we're doing. And in order to maintain the boat speed, we have to be able to uh, continue to put force on, uh, the, uh, on the oar. And that's where the strength training comes in. And um, obviously, I'm not including things in the equation like your technique and the ability to move a boat. And I, I'm, I'm saying that everything here is um, everything else being equal. Um, but at some point, it's going to be important to evaluate whether or not the strength training is going to be important. And what I've got here is this green area here, uh, which is a hypothesis um, of mine that says, you know, it's important at some point here to develop strength training. And it is important for those lightweights among you who are sitting there thinking, well, yeah, that's great, but are we going to put on any weight? It is possible to develop strength training regimes and uh, the three by four reps, which actually don't put on any weight. They're neural in nature, meaning that you get the strength gains without increasing the muscle mass. If anything, about a pound 
of um, muscle mass gained is going to equal a pound of fat lost. So you're actually becoming more lean uh, as you as you strength train. And um, this is why I think it's important that we have a strength training program that doesn't just um, have a program where we're doing all this cardio work. Um, this relationship between drag and velocity really drives what we're doing as coaches. And that's why I think it's important that you get into a good strength training program um, during the off season and why we uh, have a strength training program during the uh, season between August and uh, May and June for nationals.